Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. Today we are going to be talking about the disappearance of Michael Edwin Heron, who went by Mike, who went missing on August 23rd of 2008. Before we get started, I just wanted to ask uh, for your help. I know this might seem arbitrary, but I know YouTube uses their algorithms and whatnot. I just want to get your feedback. You know that I started this channel in order to help the families and donate to search and rescue in the past years i've been able to do that however unfortunately this year i haven't been able to as much or really as any as i'd like to i just need your help if it's leaving a comment or subscribing anything is helpful and i would appreciate that i love all your support and feedback no matter what kind it is i just want to be able to keep this channel going all right, let's get into today's case. Michael was born on June 15th of 1957. He was 51 years old at the time, roughly 5'10", 185 pounds. He was wearing a red faded t-shirt, khaki cargo shorts, and Teva sandals. He's got various scars on his body, including an epidemic scar. He is a Caucasian male with dark brown hair, hazel eyes, like I said, he has various scars as well as a tattoo on his lower back. And apparently one of his shoe sizes was half an inch smaller than the other. He also has caps on several of his teeth. Michael graduated from Lanier High School in eastern Tennessee, which has since closed. It closed roughly around 1976, after which he joined the U.S. Forest Service, where he worked in their planting and trimming division. He had lots of experience in the outdoors. Then he moved on and successfully built his own company. He started a construction company building homes called Michael Heron Builders. He started this with his two sons. He loved being in the outdoors and he was able to eventually buy his own farm, which had over a hundred acres. I'm gonna have an aerial picture of that coming up right here. His farm is located in Blount County, which is right next to Great Smoky Mountains National Park in Tennessee. He also owned a condo in Marysville, Tennessee. On the morning of August 23rd, 2008, he called his two sons, telling them that he was going from his condo in Marysville, Tennessee, to his farm in Happy Valley, Tennessee. He was going there to mow. Apparently, at the time, there wasn't any cellular phone service at his particular farm, so he always wanted to call and give his family a whereabouts of where he was going to be. On his way to his home, he stopped at one of his son's homes to pick up a mower, loaded it onto his trailer. The drive was only roughly 30 minutes. Michael was in great physical condition. He was simply going out there to mow some of his fields. He also had a couple of ATVs located at his farm. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. And as far as we know, he got to his farm he parked his truck at the end of the road, which was the first bizarre thing once the family did realize, in fact, that something was amiss. We realized this because he was last seen around 11 a.m. on that morning of the 23rd when his neighbors said that they saw Mike leave his home on Bell Ranch Road driving his green four-wheel drive Yamaha Wolverine ATV. They said that he waved him as he left. This is the actual road. After that, he was never seen again. This is a picture of the make and model of the ATV that he was driving on that day. The next day, friends of Mike went to the farm and noticed that his truck was, like I said, parked at the end of the road with the windows rolled down the trailer was still hitched. The mower was still on the trailer. This is a picture of what the house looks like today. He normally wouldn't have done this. He normally would have unhitched the trailer, then driven the truck up closer to the home. He did this because apparently there was a school bus that also parked near this area. Friends and family did go up to the house. They did knock on the door, but they did not try and go inside. It wasn't until a couple days later that his sons came up because they were concerned. This is when they contacted the local sheriff's office. This is when they started their search because there was no sign of Michael anywhere. The first alarming thing that they all noticed was that 
His keys to his truck were still in the ignition. His wallet, cell phone, and money clip were all on the passenger seat. The family also went and checked his Maryville condo. They found his car and motorcycle in the garage. Nothing was out of place. Back at the farm, however, the police had discovered that his one ATV was missing out of the garage. So they immediately began expanding their search in and around that area. A couple days later, after numerous other ATV searches and sniffer dogs, various ground searches were implemented. They were able to find his ATV, which they found in a very peculiar way. It was found on August 26th of that year. It was found abandoned, undamaged, about a mile from his farm. It was parked in a high gear on a very steep hill in a location that apparently Mike normally never went to. The ignition switch had been left on, which was apparently very uncharacteristic, and this would have made no sense why he would have done this. After that, there was no sign of him at the scene. There were no footprints, nothing else that the police and other volunteers could find. At first, the authorities thought that it was an accident because one of the most common things with ATVs is something happens, they hit a rock, it flips over, and the person is then trapped underneath it, and they can't get out. But after they found the ATV, this eliminated that theory. That coupled with all the rest of the clues and Mike being an experienced outdoorsman, unfortunately, after several days of searching and several hundred volunteers, they were forced to call off the search. The family, of course, kept going out and looking for Mike, and they still, to this day, have no idea what could have happened to him. Roughly eight months ago, there was a newscast where the family was requesting help and aid from the public. I researched this case thoroughly, and based on the evidence and what I have learned about Mike, I believe that there was some sort of foul play involved. It's quite possible that it might not have been Mike on that ATV at all. Going by at that speed and just waving, it could have been anyone. What would have been Mike's motivation to just park his pickup truck at the end of the driveway, leave all his belongings in there, then just go take one of his ATVs and drive out to the middle of nowhere, meaning a place that he was not usually known to be driving through? It's possible that when he arrived at his farm, he encountered somebody else. They actually stole the ATV. Who knows why they didn't steal anything else. These are just theories. No one really knows. The family is still obviously searching for closure. This was a man that was very experienced with ATVs. There was no sign of a crash or anything like that when they found the ATV. Based on witness statements, it looked like somebody had just jumped off it. This kill switch was in the off position. It's also noteworthy in saying that his neighbor that said that he saw him he was an experienced tracker and he was one of the first people to go out and help on this search and he was very dedicated on this search. It's really impossible to know. Maybe it was a disgruntled worker from his home project design company. It's really impossible to say, but the fact that to this day nothing has been found, still no clues. You might be thinking an animal attack. It's possible but there were no shreds of clothes or anything found in and around the area, and they did an extensive four-mile grid search. Despite the fact that the ATV was found just outside the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, the NPS got involved and did help with the search. Still, they were unable to find anything. I would be remiss without saying this. However, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park is one of the most visited parks in the nation every year as well as one of the parks where many people disappear under mysterious circumstances and are never found again. I want to dedicate this video to Michael, his family, his sons, everyone who knew and loved him, wishing you closure and hoping that you will find the answers that you so deserve and Hopefully, if there was foul play involved, the people or person involved is brought to justice. I will have contact information in the description with the investigative agency's information, the Blount County Sheriff's Department. If you have any information, please contact them. I want to thank you all for watching. Really appreciate all your thoughts and feedback. 
Thank you to all my subscribers and everyone that's considering subscribing. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the awesome background music. Hopefully I will see you all in the next one. Take care. As always, I will have more details and readings if you want to do more research on your own in the description. If you have any case suggestions or case feedback, I always love hearing any thoughts that you may have. Please leave me a comment or if you'd like to leave me an email, I'll have that in the description as well. I'm also still accepting calendar submissions, so if you've taken a trip, any of your outdoor adventures, I'd love to hear about it. Please send me an email with any photos that you'd like to see appear in next year's calendar. I'm just starting to get working on that. Six of the pictures will be from you guys, six will be from myself. I will be accepting calendar pick submissions through basically the middle of December. That's when I will get to work on finishing the calendar. I'll get you more details on how to order one as the time approaches. If anyone is interested in the next coin giveaway, all you need to do is leave me a comment about the video or a case suggestion, anything you want, and also say that you want to be entered into the coin giveaway. That coin should be arriving sometime at the end of the month, so you still have plenty of time to get enrolled in the drawing. For those of you that are interested, I am working on the video that a lot of you requested, my scariest moments on trail, mostly that occurred on the Pacific Crest Trail. That video will be coming up soon. All right, everyone. See you next time.